Okay, so we're about to review importing with user port in uh, Joomla 2.5. So we're on the back end looking at components and just go down here to user port and it will pull up a page of basic instructions. Uh, check here for any notifications. If you see one, it doesn't mean it won't work, it's just something to pay attention to. And then this is a listing of any programs that might send out an uh, email if something's updated automatically. So you want to pay attention to those and whether or not you want an email to go out while you're doing this. I always start with a test file, which I created in a Google Doc spreadsheet and then saved as a CSV file. And while doing that, you'll need to make sure that your header names match uh, the types of names that will import into user port. And we'll take a look at those in a second. So you can see here there are four basic actions that you can do. One of them is add, and it will tell you here click on change to make changes and uh, you'll want to have your CSV file ready before you do that and we do so I'm going to go ahead and go forward there so I'll click change and then you'll see the different options and uh, what we want to do is B use the contents of a selected file so I'll select B and this first section only applies to A or C so we don't need to worry about that right now for B all I want to know is the file so I'm going to browse to the file that we saved which we called Practice Joomla User Import and pull that in and it's going to go into uh, registered but this is for specific for C if you're ever working on exporting which groups you might want to export but now that I've got my file selected I show the edit window up here in the right and you'll see here that it's showing the contents now I noticed down here, here are the names of recognized header fields. So any fields that don't match should be changed. Now before we got on this in this exercise, I thought I changed it, but apparently I opened up the original file again. So I'm going to change that to a lowercase n just to stay consistent. Uh, Linux likes lowercase better than uppercase. And so uh, I'm also going to password instead of pw to make sure that I specifically match the name of the header that it understands. The only fields that you really need are a username to import. You can actually skip everything else, but ideally you have at least name, email, and username, and then password will be optional, which uh, we'll get into more in a second. So I can see here now that my headers match, and I've just got a couple lines of demo text for a test to import. And again, I always do my first one with a, a test field. Then I'll just click Add. And it's going to ask if I want to enable the test mode, which I'm saying no because I do have uh, email addresses set up that all go to me for this test purpose. And then it asks what I want to do here. Uh, add restrictions. Use password value. Do I want to import text if given or else override value? Import text if given or generate a random password. And so that's what we have it set to right now for this test purposes. And then I can come down here and say which group I want them to go into. And then whether or not these blocked settings apply, typically it's nothing you need to worry about. And then whether or not to notify a user. Now in this case, uh, I, I would typically want to notify a user, but again, if we were doing a big update and you know just changing an address field or something, we don't want to generate excess email. Now this is a tricky one. You'll you'll want to make note you will not be able you can't send a e notice email without editing the subject template and it will drive you crazy because no matter what you do you can't click on it it seems like it's a bug but actually all you need to do is toggle the editor so you go back to HTML mode and now we can edit our subject line and so just as a demo here I'm going to take the username tag and copy that and put it up here in my subject template and this will, uh, it's, it's pulling up this text from memory from a previous test I did. It will plug in this, compo this uh, piece of data from the database. And you see all the options down here. So you can use any of these tags and plug them into your email as well, into your body. So again, I suppose I already had that on my clipboard, but uh, you could start with a dear type of thing and then insert your text uh, however you like pulling these tags in wherever it would be appropriate. So you might have a message saying, uh, welcome to the new 
website, we invite you to log in here to update your information and profile and set a password that will be easy for you to remember. We hope you'll come back often. And again, it, it helps a lot to get people's attention when you've got their own name and information in there and it doesn't look like a spam message. So once that's done, all we do is hit add. And it's ignoring these lines because it's saying they already exist. Uh, but I assure you it works. That's why they already exist. I went through this exercise just before we started. So that's how you use UserPort. And then once they're imported, uh, the next phase for this particular website would be uh, looking at Civi 